All right. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Grandma Martha. Hi. We have uh, Grandma D and Aunt Carolyn and then Lori. And then I think Charlie was going to join, but um, he had to go do something. So he'll probably log back on in a little bit. Um, so for today, I thought we could fin um, continue with the recording that we we got about about a third of the way through it last week. The it's the KCP 90A changes made after settling in Oklahoma, and so I have it here. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. I'm recording, and I know um, people might have a lot going on today, so we'll just um, play the recording. Um, for our opening prayer, we'll go ahead and use the uh, prayer that's on the recording. Um, so let me pull it up so we can get started. Uh, cool. And let me, I'm going to test the audio. So tell me if y'all can hear it. And at this time, I'm going to call on my dad, James Silverhorn, to give us the invocation. Okay, can can everyone hear that? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. oh good. All right, awesome. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay, so it was James Silverhorn. Um, Grandma D, did you want to uh, to catch anything that you'd like to share? Uh, and he speaks real fast, and I'm down to one hearing aid. So anyway, I'll do the best I can. I know one phrase he was talking about the changes. And at one part, he said that even though this is our Kiowa way, we no longer are allowed to, we're no longer allowed to live the way that we did. That, 
and I can't remember how he phrased it in Martha Nell does, but I heard it. Go 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 get ma daughter. I mean that was our way. And still we had to it isn't that way anymore. We had to give that up, more or less. So and then you talked about trying to recall the, the changes that were taking place. That's what I'm talking about. That's the phrase I caught. It's long, he said a lot, but that's what he said. Thumbs up in that little phrase, what they're talking about. Oh, uh -huh. thank you, Grandma. Um, Grandma Martha, would you like to add anything? Um, <clears throat> yeah, she um, kind of caught a lot of it. Yeah, he does talk very fast and he's saying a lot of things in there. Uh, but he starts out his prayer by talking about it being like on a Sunday. I uh, mentioned talking about that day. And he talks about, you know, those old Kiowa ways that we had that we knew. And then he talks <clears throat> about some of the things. Um, he said, here we're gathered again to talk about things that we know. And so he, they're recording. So that's what he's mentioning. And like she said, he was talking about... Um, uh, our way of life is starting to disappear. Uh, Pekidos means it's, it's starting to disappear a little bit. And he said that um, he was still here and um, uh, he was happy about that. And he was praising God for all the things that he provides for us. And let's see, what did he say? Oh, he started talking about this land, the land that we are on now. He talked about how we came by it and how... Um, um, we live there now, and uh, he says he's praying for all people. And um, again, he um, mentions uh, the Creator in his prayer, saying, uh, "You know, life is how you decree it." That's like how I got out of it. It's like life is the way you're gonna. You already have it out there. And then he said, "We get mixed up with things because we're so used to our old ways, but now we're having to move to newer things." And uh, at the end of his prayer, now he said a whole lot in between, but he said at the end of his prayer, he said he was uh, asking and hoping for good things for the future. That's what I got. Oh, oh. <clears throat> that is a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, a lot. How you you mentioned the uh, like life is the way you decree it. Do you remember how he said that? Well, some, you know, they'll say, uh, Ankom da. Ankom da means he's got a plan in place already for your life or the way things are going to be. And I've heard that many times in the elders' prayers when they talk about it, that they know that he already, you know, he controls everything. So they know he's got things set in place. But Ikom da means to kind of set a plan in place or I have something there for you. Oh, oh. And could that phrase be used um, outside of talking about um, life, like outside of a prayer? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Like making a plan for, like if someone was right. making a plan. Yeah, kind of have something in place where people follow that way. That's what you're mm -hmm. talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. I'm eating M&M. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. Uh -huh. All right. Oh, looks like we might have lost uh, Grandma D. Um, we'll see if she uh, is able to log back in. But um, okay, so let's go. I'm going to go back to uh, um, where we left off. The last speaker, let's see, we stopped at 21 minutes into it 2141 so um all right so we'll go ahead and pick back up um i think this should be the next speaker let's see the audio the angle many changes have taken place and just to name oh. a few The oily anger, many changes have taken place, and just to name a few.
Okay, so that's where we left off. So I'm going to go ahead and play the next speaker. And now at this time, we'll hear from my aunt Hazel Botone. Hey, go get those on my. Yeah, here we go. I'm on my top of the Chicomo. They on they go. Oh, Pahawatan son. No, go no get paid by go. They pink a get the on key. はい、やほんで、はげげこうと。ゲタもほんでおんき。のハウディパオゴサイ、タゲ、ニャキアエサナイクバトンゲガーン。こうこうやタイでオ、ニャイクボイクオアイ。こうでほうゲ、エンガン
Food preservation, they don't talk about being how you get that, do they? Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, Grandma D is back. Um, Grandma D, I don't know if you caught any of the <laughs> recording, but if you <laughs> did, just want to see if you wanted to make any comments. And I see, Grandma D, you're still muted. <laughs> Can you hear me? Oh. Okay. I got the tail end of Hazel Bolton. She's talking about uh, they uh, people planted and food and they uh, how they preserved it in the past. She said they dried it. And then, then it came down to uh, after they planted, then they preserved it by canning. And then when I got on, she's talking about freezing and how there were places that where you were demonstrated how that was done. And then she talked about, uh, well, anyway, that was the part, but then. It's interesting that she said everything has changed, not the same. Mm -hmm. And she said um, even our language has changed. Oh, no. And she yeah. used the example of how she named her grandparents, but I don't. I was uh, have Kiowa names and how they all gathered together, and her uh, Hazel and her sister listened. Who, uh, she said she knew the old way, the way they, they spoke, and then there was a new way, uh, another way. So that was it. And they listened to stories. And, and that's where she noticed that uh, the language changed. So she gave an example, but I don't remember what they said then and then what we say now. Oh, awesome. Um, Grandma Martha, would you like to comment? Um, okay. Um, yeah, at the beginning, she's saying, you know, we're back here talking, talking about, you know, recording, I guess. And then she said, um, I mentioned that she's thinking that they're going to be discussing food. And then, uh, she talks about um, how they learn to preserve food. And she said, on key, she kept a couple of times she mentioned that. And I guess she's talking about quite a ways back, a long time ago. Um, <clears throat> she said they found out about canning. And she said canning in English. And she said they learned to use those uh, jars to uh, can in. Uh, she called them boink uh, And they learned how to preserve their food in those jars. And she said they were <clears throat> drying their food was the other way that they could do this. Uh, I think she said, uh, uh, I can't even see my own writing here, but it always sounded like they were like drying something, you know, like uh, maybe even corn. That's what I'm thinking. And then she said the teachers who were also called the agents were the ones that taught them about canning. And it was over at Fort Cobb. And she said, uh, when they would do this, she said the food tasted really natural to them. Uh, and she did mention um, some things that they worked with and corn was one of them. Uh, and then she said, Paul uh, go is one of them, uh, this type of fruit. And uh, what did she say? Um, they had, but they had a little different taste is what she said. It wasn't quite like the fresh, but it had a little different taste. 
And then she said, but now they use freezers, you know, um, and she kind of mentioned that word for ice blocks too. <clears throat> and then she said, they go out and buy food and they buy quite a lot of it. So they had to know how to preserve it. Uh, that's why they start learning to freeze things and then be able to use it later. And then she said, but some people just got lazy when that happened. It seemed like when they got their convenience stuff, they got lazy. But she mentioned that her father did plant a lot of things and um, they all helped. And um, then like Dolores said, she started talking about the differences in everything, including language and talking about the stories that were told. She mentioned some of uh, their, probably their neighbor, Kaiwas, that would, they'd go visit them and they'd tell stories. And I got the one name, it said uh, Gawki, the Gawki people. But that first name, I went a little fast and I didn't quite catch what, what that name was, but she said it in Kaiwan. I have to listen to it again. And that's kind of what I got out of there, but it was just her ending by saying everything is so different. Oh, uh -huh. well, that's that's a lot, um, a lot to explain. <clears throat> Did um, so when she mentioned so drying food, she said was something that we did like before we learned about canning, like before the reservation. Yes, because she was saying that they already kind of knew about that, but they didn't know about the canning and jars and you know that type of canning. They learned okay. from those people. Yeah, but they knew that they could learn things to preserve it. And um, I remember my grandmother used to dry a lot of things um, in the summertime, you know, um, different types of stuff. I remember that. I, I don't know it much else after that, but I just remember her working with it. Oh, awesome. Oh. All right. Well, thank you. Um, okay, let's uh, see who speaks next. <clears throat> who was the first speaker? Um, is it Hazel Botown? It was Hazel, yeah. Hazel. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, let's see here. Okay, I'm going to press play. And now my aunt uh, asked her to give us her version. No, Ango, get those on higher. Don't go and get them, they get all day in the old day hall. A ah, oh, here they are on the high, get high gone. Oh, go high, honey, toy, bead. M. Hey, they to them. Oh, Paho, Pa get high, it's a big old Paho, don't get. No, I ain't heard a keg or dog, ain't go high, get gone that. Get, no, I ain't heard a key, they make a tongue get it all. Ain't go on key. Hey, go, hey, go, gain, don't they? I all put on, ba. อ่าคุยก็ออนปากุยะออยออนปากุยะออยออนปากุยะออนปากุยะออนปากุยะออนปากุยะออนปากุยะออนปากุยะออนปากุยะออนปากุยะออนปากุยะออนปากุยะออน
<laughs> okay. Um, so that was Esther Topham. Um, Grandma D, would you like to start? <laughs> well, the, uh, the part I got, she started off with uh, laundry. <laughs> How you had how you had to wash yeah all on my and all on was and said you went to uh, the process was very tedious you had to go first of all you had to get your water draw your water sometimes it was from a well or sometimes it was from the creek then you had to build a fire then you had to heat the water. And then uh, your water, that was the in the past. And then, uh, but she started out with starting out. I'm sorry, I got ahead of my, she started out with going to uh, the laundry, modern day laundry. Mm -hmm. And she would put her clothing in the machine and put money in there. And then when that was done, uh, then on the other side, she said she, when she went to dry, the other machine was doal, doal, she called them, the dryers. Said doal, the doal or buckets. Then you put your money in and then, the, you know, to dry your clothes. That's the way she's talking about her experience then, now at the time. And then she went back and told how it was in the past. And she said, we're, we're old, we're elders, and we've seen all, all this. And and so we've been able to pass those days. And it's not as uh, as hard at it as, ever, as it was. And then everything was slower. Also, everything you did was slow. And using, you know, going, uh, getting your livestock, your horses, and traveling by wagon and horse, and everything was a slower pace. And that's all I can, <clears throat> I can remember. Oh, I hope. Um, Grandma Martha? Okay. Well, she covered most of it right there because uh, she just um, added in, the, you know, the things that she remembered doing. And, and it's like uh, Dolores said, uh, what <clears throat> she's talking about um, how hard it was or slow it was, I guess, to work with this, to what she was mentioning, washing and things like that back in the day, because she had to do everything one by one until you got to it. And then you were finally able to wash and and put your clothes out, I guess, to dry. But she said that um, that's, but the life now, she was saying that um, 
you know, it was, it was better because like she said, she was able to go and learn how to use the machines and dryers and she thought it was fast and we got things done quicker. And she, then she, um, uh, when she was discussing about a long time ago when you had to make a fire and make heat your water. And I can't remember now how she said it. I have to listen to it again, but she was saying that you had to get that rub board. Remember that rub board that people used in their tub? Well, oh she, yeah, she said that word, and I wanted to. I was going to say what? What was the word? <laughs> uh, I know that's what I said. I couldn't remember how she said it, but I knew she was saying "rub board." You know, because that's oh okay. That's what you, they used a long time ago to get their clothes kind of cleaner. And um, so I have to listen to it, catch that word again, but I knew that's what it was. And then she even went on to talk about. Um, you know, now in the modern days, we have telephone. She's talking about the um, phone. Yeah, you know, she said they could be many miles away from each other and be listening to, to hear your people talk and stuff. And uh, let's see. Um, and then somehow she went back into right there, something about they had to harness their horses. And that took yeah. a long time. And she said, now everything else you can do much faster. And that's kind of the way I ended it. But she said everything was faster now to do. Yeah, I can't I can't remember how she said rubber, or, but I knew that's what it was. <laughs> yeah, I I've forgotten how to say it. I knew it and I heard her say it. I put a note here, look, listen to it again. Okay. You wanna play that again so we can catch yeah, that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want me to rewind it? Let me uh Becky don't even see rub boards anymore, I don't think. Right, <laughs> just in a museum. <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I think it was at 27 minutes. Uh, okay, let's see. Oh, boy. Big, how you get that, dude. Oh, well. No, I don't. And now, my aunt uh, Esther give us her version. No, Angle. It turns on higher. Don't go and get them. They get all day in the all day hole. A R O H D R O N T H A G E T H A I G O N E. O K H A I E H O N D E T O I B A B I D O M H A I T E K O D E O P A H O P A G E T H A I G E T S A M I G O P A H O P R O N G E T N O A I H O D I K E G O D O T E G O H A I A I Get gum that get door a hot key day, we could don't get door a go on key. He go, he go, gee, don't he? I all pump, I all pump, we are oil pump. A quick old pump to your hay, but again, go get on door, he go, go get sold. He go poor get so go all home get get so not quick go tongue out of get I all punk. I call you know on the dog again go on get so door get up on the me go all bow. He go bow back so down he go get up to he go down the all punk get go yan on get get go yan up e. They saw Gekum that I could get the whole air. No one key, I think we could have been. Tonk M day, oh, goodbye. Yai pop, why he could not buy and go to the pop, but don't. Bow, you know, Tonk a heap. A quick egg, oh, doggy, go to a salt sock. Or, oh, door, doggy, go geek, go to it hot. Ah, quick. Hey, come on. Ah, come. Get them, them, they get down. They only go key the door, they go. Get turned down, they go. Hey, go no, I go. A pin, they go. Hey, come on, they on the toe, get down. Oh, so like a more party on the get home and on the get soft, you know. 
こうとうくげどうねんごほうくほうくどうでごおぽいごくうやくれくけまあきょういとうやけあこいごほんとんけんたいとほんでやくそいでけはいローオンキーゲモイベアテオンディクイパンタイゲオンサイゴイドテオンディゲソエオンディキーゲペルパイトンゲソイベソイベテオンオンディゴゲアゲヒゴオーホーボクソウディトウディペイアクイアディキーゲソイディオンディソイディオンディゴゲオン <coughs> okay. Did you catch any? Well, she she laughed in there when she said that word. I, and like I said, I think I recognized it, but um, she laughed first and then she said, geek off. Geek means you know you take something and you're rubbing your clothes against it to clean. So that's that little board thing. <clears throat> oh, cool! That's what I remember them saying. Geek call when I was little. That was sure to wash with. <clears throat> and that was something that was was new to Kai. Was right from when because we didn't have that <laughs> historically. I get, I'm thinking that they did have it because when she was talking about manually doing all that stuff, uh -huh. she, after you built your fire and warm your water to wash, she was saying what all you needed. And that's when she mentioned that. So that was kind of back in their time. And then later it came to be where her start of her story where she said she found those new machines and dryers, you know, and it was faster, much faster. But she oh. said it was really tiring and uh, took a long time when you, did your laundry in the past, a long time ago. I remember that laundry <clears throat> when you had the board and they had bars of yellow soap, very hard yellow soap, rub and rub and rub. <laughs> wow. I remember that. I can remember my mother washing like that, I'm sure. Before they, you had went to blue, they had something called bluing. Yeah. Remember? Yes. You know, when they had the laundry in Carnegie on that west side, uh -huh. everybody went to wash when you went into town. And um, I remember they had those four tubs or whatever kind of sitting together in groups and you wash your clothes first and then put them through the ringer. There was a ringer. And one time my arm got caught in that ringer. It scared <laughs> me to death. <laughs> and my my head was scolded because I was not paying attention. Uh, and then you um, you kept moving your clothes to the next tub, and then you got to that rinse area, and that's where they put this bluing from a bottle into the water so that it kind of brightened your clothes up, I think, is what the reason why they used it. I actually had a grandmother that was a gray haired, and she put bluing in her hair. A oh. lot of people did. A lot of people did. <laughs> Brighten up their hair and kind of had a blue tint to it afterwards. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, ringer washers. I got, you know, I got my arm caught in a ringer washer once too. They had to get apart to get it out. Well, it just scared me because I was fooling around. That happened and I knew I was in trouble because I wasn't paying attention. But it, did, it was scary as a little child. You have your arms start going to that drinker. Yeah, I was only about three years old. <laughs> And my job was to stick stick and put the clothes in, put yeah. the, clothes in the ringer. Yeah. And it took that stick in my hand and everything. <laughs> I remember that stick. I don't know what it did, that stick. I guess you stirred with it. I don't know. <laughs> well, that was so you didn't get your fingers caught. No. Use a stick. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> Scary. <laughs> Well, it made me feel better when she did say that uh, that uh, we just know what we heard, and and that's all we know. What we heard are are the elders, or I guess more or less your grandparents, and you heard them talk, 
And mm-hmm. so that's all we know from what from what we heard, what we were told. Mm-hmm. So that makes me feel better because mm-hmm. I didn't hear that much. So I don't know that much. Because a lot of the elders were the real, real Kiwas were still there here whenever they were a children. So anyway, made me feel better. Know that I don't know. I can always say, being part of this language, I learn with everybody else. Mm-hmm. So, anyway, he did say that what they knew was what they heard. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, I think uh, Miss Marion joined us. Hmm. Welcome. Welcome, Miss Marion. Yeah, good afternoon. On the own day. <laughs> oh, uh, we're listening to uh, that same recording that we started last week. It's a Kiowa Culture Program tape 90A um, about changes made after settling in Oklahoma. And so we just got done listening to uh, first it was Hazel Botone and then it was Esther Topa and she was just talking about uh, laundry and how mm-hmm. how things changed and how easy it got <laughs> to do laundry. Uh, so it's really interesting, but um, we're about to listen to the next speaker. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's see. So I'll go ahead and press play. And now, uh, my sister, Margaret. I can't get on my own get ก็ไอ้ก็ได้ได้ไอ้ก็โอ้ก็ทอดเจ้าหลอฮอนได้เก็บตอกป้าสอองก็ให้ก็ตายแก่ไอ้ไอ้ก็ได้ก็แก่
Zola, I saw Unga Zola, and I can't go to the part I need to you, pay for the same book. They go call the part, they go, I go to the armor. Oh, get I get more no, I he go on, you get no, he go talk. He gave so get out, okay, him, he go on, you get no only. They go cut out, I say, saying go out. They go buy a gum panda, make up talk, and they are pulled on the two lot. Oh, who's it? How about, oh, hi, I don't go about, oh, I began at Sunday, oh, yo. Papa get home, it got to go, oh, yeah, Sunday. The solo on key get down No, I hope go on yet. Get I don't go. I am getting it. Go boy on ya. I go. I shan't go on ya. I go. Oh, you did pay to get those on my high at the word. Get high, they talk. Go it on get. Go it on get. Get high, they talk. High at the word. I get the other meat. Okay, don't get more tea. Go on, they hire a good gun. Okay, don't that. The oil, the talk. No, I don't. Okay. Uh, let's see. Grandma D, if you like to start. <clears throat> Well, that was Margaret Dankoff, mm -hmm. and uh, she started out with, uh, she, well, I know the word she used several times was uh, saw on. Mm -hmm. Then she used it several times. Yeah. Saw, saw on means being, well, it's, it's uh it's a word that can be used different ways, but in this instance, mostly it's uh, being industrious <laughs> and working hard. And those, some people were industrious and they were the ones to plant things and to grow. And, and uh, then, that, then the women would take care of the food. And then she also mentioned that men would uh, <coughs> go hunting and the women dried the food and all the fruit. She's talking the way back. And then she said, uh, uh, they uh, dried food and, and then uh, <laughs> the planted. And then long ago, they just had, she's talking about well, long ago, whenever they had to travel. I, she used the term something about horses that were old. Mm -hmm. and, and well-worn horses, I think I like. She talked <laughs> about that. She she used a word for it that, that I've never heard, and I can't remember it. But she <clears throat> went back to that far. And then she said, and then uh, the uh, that was back when, and then the then the white people came, and they they were became very. Uh, Numerous, there were a lot of them, and, uh, and then that's when the, the power ways changed. And she said the younger people don't know that, and so that's what we're trying to preserve and trying to tell, pass on what the way it was. And, and she brought that up at the end. Now, uh, this is for. This is one place where several times in the recordings, some will say that, that they're doing this for the generations to follow who did not, did not know how the Kiwis lived in the past. So that's what, that's what she, would, she brought up. Obaha. Oh, oh. Um, Grandma Martha? Okay, um, um, Dolores pretty much covered most of it, and 
um, when Margaret started first talking, she's talking about um, long time ago. She mentioned us and us having knowing the Kiowa way, and um, then she goes on to talk about kind of how it became. And she said uh, some people were um, uh, really good workers. They were always busy because they planted their own food, and they took care. That was traveled by wagon and horse. Sound like that's the only way they had to travel at that time. <laughs> and they dried their food, like for instance, corn. Uh, they not only could dry the corn, but they also boiled it and they peeled it. Is what she said. And um, <clears throat> and it, she that's the first time she mentioned saw. If they're saw onga, that means they're very um, uh, capable of um, um, doing all this good work, and uh, they're proficient with it. And they dried meat that the men hunted. But they didn't do that anymore now. She said today they don't hunt like that and they can bring that in. But she said the women did uh, dry a lot of things like fruit. Uh, they dried it so they could be winter ready for winter. And so in the wintertime they ate good because they had that preserved food. And she mentioned just items like grapes or fruit and meat that could be uh, preserved like that. And she said if they were saw on, they could have. Um, a lot of things like they even got acquired cattle and they could also make butter is what she said so I guess with milk they could churn it and make butter but she said now it's different and they're mixed up um there's like she said there was a lot of white people in the area now uh and she talked something about traveling far they could travel far too and I kind of missed some of that but she said um the last thing was the young ones don't know too much now she said they need to learn Kiowa she said but they just know the white language and she said that's too predominant that's kind of how she ended it Omaha <clears throat> uh, uh -oh. <clears throat> awesome uh let's see uh Miss Marion would you like to make any comments Well, they cover different, yeah, you know, portions. Uh, just how that some people plant horses after um, the Kiowas were settled, because the Kiowas were never farmers, and uh, it's always their favorite plant, and because. Uh, in the past, uh, Kiowas used to trade with other tribes who uh, grew corn. I'm just adding that this comment as extra. And um, they grew corn. Some some of the people who grew they sliced off the they did it, uh, dried it, and. Uh, At that time, men went hunting out into the woods. But of course, today she's saying they don't do that anymore. And some of the people raised chickens and pigs. And she said, oh, she said, she said, use this word, so yeah, dog. Oh, cool. It's so good. And so I think that word should be uh, translated. Martha. <laughs> Long ago, things were different. And today, the younger ones don't know about the past. And so what they're speaking of at this time, at that time, when they were making the tape, is that uh, we're leaving behind this information so that some of the younger ones might know how things used to be and learn. But then again, she goes back to the language. Today, there's the uh, white language is spoken, and hopefully, is what I, um, from what she said. 
hopefully that the young ones would uh, learn some of these words because that's what is what she was implying. They're leaving behind this information for that purpose. Oh, uh, that's it. Oh, ho. <clears throat> awesome. Um, okay, let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, go to the next speaker here. Isabel to answer it will give her give us her version. Ain't go ahead go eight eight death thumb key ankle and the key that by go on you hey go on the get dog echo to them get to son my law or to my dog um be jank with your daughter and let go on the head you um to on each ago, soy built the yam, yeah, yep, yam, what's a liquid soy be? I heard the key that ya, a yatad or the hunt. You got biscuits, ya, oh boy, do I got your yam, what got your soy be, yam, yalgo. I heard the key that by go breakfast, but don't you got to go. Eggs go big and hey, you thought, oh, it's a good, it's not a breakfast. No, oh, hi, you hey, hold it, you pop, do I go? Hi, you hey, you pop, do I go? Tell him some more, you know. No, I go, I'm all, oh, oh, do I go? I go, you saw it, be too much, I'm so long, I'm going to go. All, all day, I go, I'm, I'm all, oh, oh, I'm going to go. Next day, I'm going to go to the outside. You know, you saw it, but I got equal cut. Yeah. Arms, and you go, I call me here. Yes, Sadla, I'm going to go. I go, he can't all turn your boy son, so I'll put the great equal dog. I got to go. Yeah, I don't want to go. It could be cooked. With a they got ya, ya mort yam. They hunted ya soy be yam to hunt it. I go, ya, oh, cannon boy, ya dog boy, the yam to the el, ya go. They to yell get a the godongum sal hook the mayo, em del de hunted ya to, soy built the ya to. Go, I ho ya deli, go hang ya to go, he gone ya chain on my go. Uh, had to go home. No, not sell pressure cooker. Okay, okay. Okay, your boy said, Go and I get the oil you some. I go a story. I have a got up going to attend that they get hot to cook up. I go day up for the just the soy being I am so you thought that I had go. But my up you saw the oil hun and hold it yet. The um go on the. Shown this to be so talk a couple if be on keep it that you throw you on the but I am me to they on the you saw it be on key your daughter and I own the key that we got it got so it is by a but I come I go so it is a same I go be on jelly go yes so look go on the freezer get yeah he got yeah all he got they got yeah I don't do much in it, I go to the freezer, you get so long, they keep it up with your heart, you get good, yeah. Hold them, they eat, you go, you go, hold it, you be on my own, they keep up, you go down there, you saw it, I hold the same, I ain't go down, you go, you go, saw it, they are the same. I be your daughter, I ain't, I ain't, Washington, I ain't go, you got to stop here, you say, I ain't go, I ain't go. One day, son, you ain't going to go to the house, son. He got to go to the side, he ain't the key that, but he come to the door. Or the baby go, oh, and he come to the door, go, he be the daughter, he ain't go. My grandchildren and daughter, and then they thought, how we do this? Way back there. Oh, and he said, go, hi, you didn't go to the house, and then talk to the door, he go, he go, oh. Side the on creek and dog side the cement. No, and dog on a go. You the yellow go 
Okay. Um, let's see. Grandma D, would you like to start? Well, I'll try. She said a lot. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but she went on the same. If it helps, she went. I said the, about the same that everything, the way they prepared the food and and she compared then to now and she's talking, she started out about cooking was slow and she had to build a fire and, and, and she said, you always had biscuits. She men mentioned that and then she said, now breakfast is not breakfast without eggs or bacon. But back then, you ate anything. And it didn't have to be specific. You just ate what you had, what you prepared. And then she said everything was slow, your cooking and your laundry. And then she talked about uh, ironing. And she didn't know the word for iron. And I mean, the 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 iron, the iron iron <laughs> that you cooked on the stove and iron with the utensil or whatever. She said the name. She didn't know the name, I don't think. But anyway, she said, I had to laugh because she said, when you iron, you had to put these things on the hot stove. And so you always cooked a pot of beans with that because you had the stove on and you cooked other things with it. And then uh, everything was faster and talking about preparing food and sewing was also faster and traveling. And she told about traveling to Washington, D.C. and did it in one day. And then she said talking to her grandchildren. Now, she said she, she would tell them about how life was then, but she said, I can't, I can't talk to them and I have to speak to them in English because they're Creek Seminole and they don't understand. And uh, she said in the old days, uh, if you married some from some other tribe, they sort of made fun of you and they would say, Andongedo. I had to laugh about that. That means she's hard up or couldn't find anybody or he, she. And so they married another tribe. And then uh, she, uh, she said that uh, that was the thing that she, she talked about was that she, how we came from here, from there to here. Actually, we like speaking to your grandchildren. She couldn't speak Kiowa to them and uh, tell them stories. And you'd be surprised that, that she's talking about her children, but uh, I was told my great grandson, I mean, to get an idea of how it is. I was telling my great grandchildren that we didn't have pizza. We know what pizza was until after World War II, and even long after that. When I when I left Carnegie, I learned of pizza, of pizza. So, and that was amazing to them that I grew up without pizza. Can you imagine? So anyway, those are things that if you tell a little little bit about how you grew up, that's interesting to them. 
And so I guess that's what she was doing with her grandchildren. But I, I had to laugh when she said, if you married another tribe, it's because you couldn't find a Kiowa. So you don't get no, you married. So I had to laugh because I'm not married to a Kiowa. <laughs> but my, most people's reason Kiowas nowadays is because you're related to everybody. <laughs> So you had, to, you had to go outside the tribe if you weren't related to them. So, right. oh, Omaha, oh, oh. Aho. <laughs> that's awesome. <clears throat> Love that. Uh, let's see, Grandma Martha. Okay, yeah, she covered a lot of what she said. I think she kind of gave the facts, background, and everything. Um, but. What I just thought was kind of neat was when she was talking about um, doing everything slowly in the past, you know, and a while ago we were just talking about how slow it took to watch. Recording in watch. progress. And here she's talking about doing things slowly in the past. And uh, she said, at breakfast, you know, like Dolores said, if you don't have eggs and bacon, it's not breakfast or something. And, but back then she said they ate just kind of what they had. It didn't have to be a certain menu. Uh, and she was just saying how slow everything was, everything you did. Uh, and she said, like, for instance, when you did your laundry, then the next day is when you did your ironing, because then your clothes were dry and you're ready to clean, you know, get them ready for wear. Um, and uh, she, when she talked about ironing, she said, uh, I named Kalama. Kalama means to iron those clothes, you know, kind of make them stiff with starch, I guess. Um, and... They had to do a lot of manual stuff, like heat those irons for it. And so because they had to do manual stuff to wait on their irons to heat and stuff, they usually boil beans. She's talking about cooking all time because, you know, beans back in the day, it took them a long time to cook them. So that's what went together, I guess, the timing. And she said sometimes it'd get really hot in there where they were cooking in their, in their room or their kitchen, I guess. Um, then she said they don't do canning now. She said she don't. She had a pressure cooker that she never uses anymore. And she said she goes to the store and she can buy what she wants. Um, and then she talked about sewing. She said um, that women had a lot to do and cooking too. And it was all slow. It took them a long time to get through it. And she said we live fast now. Is what she said. Everything is faster. Uh, we got freezer food. She said, all you have to do is take your food out of the freezer and put it in the hall dome, which is like an oven, I would say, like an oven. And she, then she um, talked about how you how travel, travel was fast, a one-day trip uh, to D.C. and back. <clears throat> she said, we just live a fast life today. It's different. And then like Miss Harrigar said, she talked about a story of uh, talking to her grandchildren. And that's what I got. Oh, wow. <clears throat> oh, oh, ho. <clears throat> Those are some really good, uh, good words for everyday life. <laughs> I like that story about the uh, grandchildren. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, Miss Marion, would you like to comment? <clears throat> it's uh, basically the same. Uh, comments and like when she talked about uh, laundry, doing the laundry. Of course, that took uh, one day too because they had to heat the water, you know, do everything by hand because they didn't have washing machines. But I'm sure it's tough then. But yet they still had to heat the water. <laughs> and uh, whenever they did heat the onion, the next day when they were uh, preparing to iron the clothes, then of course to make use of that uh, stove because it was you know like wood stoves with the wood. I'm sure most of them had wood stoves. Yes, some more like you got to have kerosene stoves, but when you had a stove on, then they just went ahead and made use of uh, all these beans or all these some kind of soup or whatever. And of course, the women were tireless workers of his. And probably the best is all this type of work. 
And of course, so there's no things to do. There's so many you have to get up and cook and then you have to take care of things around the house. So everything took a lot of time. Cooking meals and so we, and taking care of the house. And then she says, Next is what other, the other comments that uh, uh, Dolores and Nels about the people or children married out to other tribes. And she said they would used to make fun of these kind of things, but people married into other um, groups or tribes, I guess, or married. Outside the tribe, and uh, I know that's true because I've used to hear people making comments. They didn't want their people to be uh, married outside, but of course that's happened more. So that's it. Oh, aho! On the aim side, Doc. On the I, want, I wanted to ask Miss Martha if she remembers. We used to have to dry the clothes. And then I used to always get confused when I was little because they'd sprinkle them, roll them up really nice, stick them in a pillowcase or something, and let them so that they would get damp enough that it would look like they steamed them because they were starched so heavily. You, you, you couldn't just iron them after they dried. Right. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. so that like took forever. And I used to think, why do you dry them and then you make them wet again? <laughs> And we had that flat iron. We had a coal, um, an oil burning stove, and they would turn it on, and then we do the flat iron. And yeah, we would cook on that. Mm -hmm. Well, also in that case, uh, Lori, when um, they did their laundry, they had certain clothes that they put to that starch process. You know, right? That's when they dried, they were starch. stiff. They were stiff when they got to put away. That's why I thought they sprinkled them to kind of calm them down again so they could get a smooth iron out of them. Right. But, but that's why they would sprinkle them. But at least when you're little and you look at it and you think, wow, mm -hmm. they're doing, why don't they do it while it's still damp? Because you had all these extra steps to look like. Well, it was time consuming. Really? Yes. Right now. Mm -hmm. Time consuming. And if you waited too long to iron them, then they smell bad and you had to start all over again. <laughs> that's right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Well, definitely a lot of steps involved. <laughs> I'm really glad that I don't have those steps to do nowadays. I'd never get anything done. <laughs> I know how my mom felt, feels now. <laughs> Gotta uh, definitely appreciate <laughs> what we have now. <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, let me no, let me share my screen again so we can hear the next speaker. <clears throat> okay. Uh, cool. And now, Stephen Zota, Echo, Elder King, the daughter, Bota Leonardo. Eikö totta jantusanma on ei kumke kekko, eikä totta eikä Suomi heikko, on te poimva heikä toki tämä te heikä tonki. Suomi tavaki ja hauvori kotsen kei heikä to, uuden open hauva kove ki he kokee heikä to, he koem ke kem ki toi kakoi ko. So ya salon, he got so salon of coco. He got that when he go home, be the Hayam Chai to Hone, a big old go pin pin at Hayam Sot. Japo, to now the key got a coat to go on the cook at the oil decay. Chapa be good, what you want? He got to look, don't get done on key on talk at Domo. Ego got to them with the own key get to them. Eikö hoitoon kuva toukia, hoikkukia. Eikö hakea toinen puolueikkia tukia, on toinen puolueikkia toinen muuankin. 
Grandma D. She had to step away for a while, so she didn't hear that part. Oh, okay. No worries. Um, Grandma Martha. Okay. Oh, said, I like the way he talks real fast, and he gives you. Uh, <clears throat> he said, "Long time ago, there was no electricity." And how he said for electricity was boy mahake yeah and that's kind of like talking right. about lightning you know so that's how they explain electricity it wasn't here yet and um uh what did you say oh and people knew back then uh, they had different ways of uh, doing things like for instance if um somebody came by your place and they were traveling by horse he said there was something that they knew what the meaning was and they said um Koi e, koi e, and I think that was a signal to those people to that they were welcome to come there to their home. And he said they ate at the table, um, and he said they just—I mean, the hospitality was there. Is what he's trying to say. And he said nowadays when you get a knock on a door, he said people will say, "What do you want?" You know, "What do you want?" <laughs> Which I have a story about that too. But and then he goes on to talk about the telephone. Having the telephone, he said, you know, we had nothing like that before. And he said um, uh, that uh, nowadays, you know, we all speak English. He said, and somebody said back in the day, you're Kiowa, you should speak Kiowa. He said, um, that language was given to us and we should use that. Um, and uh, that's kind of how he ended it up. Um, I'm trying to say that. Um, Oh, let's go back to when somebody knocked you at the door. Um, we had a Kiowa class back in the 90s, and uh, Dr. Gus Palmer was our teacher. And he said, I was talking about the generosity of the Kiowa people, that when someone drove up to your home, either a wagon, a horse, or a car, or whatever, he said they welcomed them in because they were glad to see them because, you know, they didn't, people couldn't go real um, fast and quickly like we do now. So, when they'd see people, they were glad to have company and, and they were prepared for them. So when they came in, they were offering them something to drink and they'd have to give them something to eat. They wouldn't even ask them if they wanted it. They would just have it for them. And so that was uh, Kiowa generosity that was known. And um, so Dr. Palmer said, you, do you guys remember that? And the people over in there said, yes, we remember that. <laughs> and then he said, but nowadays he said, Someone drives up to your house, he said, you look out the window and you say, hey, somebody's out there, hide the chips and the Coke, you know. And we all laughed about it, which is kind of what this man was saying. And then there was a second thing in there that kind of was like a tempted dinner there. Let's see. Oh, we had a panel discussion at school one day for another teacher. And they were talking about how everyone is speaking English now. 
and then not very many people are speaking Kiowa anymore or your own language is rather because we had other teachers in there with us too, other tribe teachers. And uh, the, the teacher of the class that she wanted us as the instructors to give a little uh, background on how we felt about um, um, uh, it, why is it important for us to keep our languages? Because like somebody said, well, you all talk English, you know, everybody's talking English now, you know, what's wrong with that? You know, everybody's into it. Then why would you want to go back and be speaking your language or kind of keep your language? So that was the question. And so she said, can you give us a little information on it? And uh, <clears throat> so different ones had different things. And when it was my turn, I just said, you know, your your language, which in my case was Kiowa language, I said, that identifies who you are as a person. And if you lost that, you never have that to go back on. You just always could just speak English and that was it. And then the Choctaw teacher spoke up, it was his turn. And he said, you know, he said that's a, that was a, something given to all the tribes. They had a language that they had, not only with the culture, but they had that language specific to them. That's why, you know, we can't understand other people, Indian people where they speak if we don't know the language. And he said, what do you, this is what caught my ear was, he said, what are you gonna do when you get to heaven? And God says, what happened to that language that I gave you? How come you're not using it? You know, and they sort of caught my ear because I thought that's true. You know, that's something that you have, not everybody does. And if you give it up or you let it go or you lose it, then where are you gonna be? Can't explain that. Anyway, I just thought that was just something I would throw in there. But, because it's fit in with what this person was saying. Oh, Oh, aho. Oh, I like that. Those are some good, good stories. Good, good things to remember. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay. Maybe yeah, times it. definitely changed. <laughs> <clears throat> um, let's see. Uh, Miss Marion, would you like to comment? Um, yeah. 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 Cloth on the table, like you, you know, prepare the table, put the tablecloth. They used to invite the people in, give them coffee or something to eat, whatever they do. But people just ask, what do you want? They agree with that. I'm saying. And of course, this was with a totally different tribe I was talking to um, in around here. It's from uh, more than tribes. And I was talking about how um, generous our people, you know, were. We've and uh, now things have changed, especially when you had company, you would invite them in. And he said, well, now where I come from, he said, we see people come driving up. They'll say, oh, hide, hide the Coke, hide the food, hide this, hide that. And I, was, I said, what? I said, you mean you don't even bother to ask them poor things if they're hungry? Or maybe they came to borrow a cup of sugar or something. And people are so selfish now. And I just had to you know, say that, you know, because it's so cruel. But it's that what people do. And then I just put the sus these on to says he said, maybe you should have children. And 
And people at Congress used to say, speak our language, speak our language, which was true even when I was younger and I used to hear that continuously. Speak our language, learn it, speak it. Don't forget, don't forget. And so I've always kept that in my mind, but of course, um, times are changing. And that's it. Oh, aho. Yeah, those are some good, good stories to remember. Okay, uh, let's see. I'll go ahead and press play. We'll hear the next speaker. And now, a guy can't be. Ah, go no, I don't hard. Go ahead, go and die. Don't come on day. Go and go keep that door. They go. No, I la ya on the rain. Go ah, get it. Go that all tired to. Oh, go pull to keep on the the the. Go that ya don't get cool. Ya go get door. They go a key ah. They go go and die. Go ya I get get. Go and get go and die. Get get. ตอมเองเคยเข้าเต็มซอดเตสันดาอูเซมาเต็มอัดเจ้าให้ก็อย่าให้เกตอกิก็เกตออยี่ออมไอ้ก็เกตอูเซเวทอดสู้เกตออม
She's with my sister. Oh, okay. All right. No problem. Um, Grandma Martha? I didn't get everything that he said. I was kind of in, in between words, but um, it sounded like he was talking about remembering the old ways and what it was like growing up Kiowa back in his young days um, and um, being among um, Indian homes. He said uh, it seems like they kind of had a hard life. They lived a hard life, but um, um, then he talked something about the grass growing and the water still flowing. And then he said, but everything seems to be stopping now. He said, like the old life, the old life's going away. Um, and he's, uh, he was thinking of good things today when he was talking. He said, and he knew it was different today because even the work is different. And he talks about uh, gaining electricity. And um, he said, um, uh, gas, like gas, you know, for your uh, car, I guess. Uh, and he said, and people are tending to study new things. He said, people are going to school. And he said, even in the churches, uh, they want their um, children to learn well. Um, then the last thing he went into was driving fast. They even drive fast today, he said. And he said, sometimes they're driving us to eat somewhere. And it made him happy. And that's how he ended at Omaha. Oh, oh. Um, let's see. Uh, Miss Marion, would you like to comment? Yes, Bree. He just uh, said he was there this week uh, because they're talking about the country. I say culture. They said just the land, the earth, you know, it's good, the grass, everything's wonderful. And uh, just used to tell him about these things. But I really said, remember how our people are so thankful for all these things. The earth and the water and the grass, water and the grass. And the white people are changing things constantly. Yeah. And that's all I'll I'll stop there. Oh, aho. Awesome. Uh, let's see. We have about 10 minutes left. Uh, probably have time for one more. Let's uh, see uh, who speaks next. Omaha. <laughs> I guess that's the end of the recording. Uh, let me stop sharing. Okay.
okay. You know, these recordings, I, th I think, like, I don't know, I just hope some young Kiowa student, it'd be really cool if someone got interested, like you could learn a lot, like if you were doing a historical, like, you know, working, a, studying history, and talking about like how people um, view changes, like how times change. This would be like a really good uh, opportunity for someone to, to kind of use it in their studies, you know, as, a, um, as, you know, some sharing of experiences and things. It's just amazing that we have this, uh, these recordings as a resource. Um, so I'm really grateful that, that all of those, that elders, you know, they spent years doing, you know, putting those recordings together and it's just amazing. Every single time is just, yeah, I learned so much. Um, so really grateful to, to them for, uh, leaving these recordings for us so we can, hopefully do do what they wanted and carry it on <clears throat> and not forget, you know, what they wanted to share. So, um, Aho de Batha for joining. I guess we'll um, kind of wrap things up. Um, let's see, does anyone have any um, final comments or questions or things? Yeah. <laughs> Martha, I better not say anything. I was just thought of something that was not <laughs> Why do some people wear a sash <laughs> when they're with their dress instead of a belt? I thought that was kind of a silly question. I was talking to Martha about that. I just thought uh, you speak funny. <laughs> oh. It's because they probably couldn't afford a leather belt. Because in the yeah, months ago they wore satin. They wore a belt, a sash, whatever. Even with their buckskin dresses, that was that was just accepted because you know there's no satin rule to say everybody has to have a leather a leather belt. No, oh. I've seen it. I've seen my. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Grandma Martinell, I saw you came off mute. Uh, did you hear what uh, Ms. Marion asked? Yes. Or, <laughs> we, discussed, we discussed that earlier, and um, I thought of all the important parts yeah. of what was going to be discussed later that someone brought up the fact of uh, uh, why somebody would be wearing a, a cloth sash rather than, a, I guess, our leather belts now. Uh, and I thought it was kind of a moot point, but it got brought up. That was not the only thing I saw in there that was off the wall, I thought a little bit. And anyway, I think it belongs when you're talking about the uh, culture of your clothing rather than other things. And we've got so much in our culture that if you try to put a lot of different things together mm -hmm. like that, you'd have a big, big uh, basket of stuff. And I think it needs to all kind of be compartmentalized so, so youngsters can remember and uh, see what mm -hmm. they're learning, hear what they're learning. Um, and to me, clothing is kind of a separate thing. But when that came up, um, but when you look back at the old pictures, the old, real old pictures, uh, there were the women wearing the sashes with the buckskin, and I never thought anything about it because I thought that's what they had to use at that time, and that's that was it. And then we probably evolved into changing over and using the the leather belts later. Well, I um, think you're. Well, I'm sorry. I think you're right though because 
they wouldn't have had buckles. Yeah, well, there's a lot later. of stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why that happened. Um, and uh, Mary, did you want to bring up that point about somebody brought up something about and to talk about the purpose of the apron or something like that? That's what I saw in there. That was the only other weird thing I saw. And I thought, well, everybody should know that. Every Kiwa female ought to know that. <laughs> but that got brought up too. So mm -hmm. people have crazy questions out there sometimes. Well, we're talking about something totally different and uh -huh. something that's just totally, that's why I couldn't help but say that because everybody was quiet. Well, nobody asked if anybody had the comments. <laughs> this is a silly comment. <laughs> <laughs> everything oh. has its place and we're doing the language now and everything yes. had a That's name in Kiowa too it had its name for it you know people could mm -hmm. say you're talking about Matsawapa or something like that and everybody knew what that was you know um, so different parts of your clothing you know had a, had a name on it just like all the parts of a teepee there's different parts of a teepee that has a name i mean we have a huge culture and you got to think about it like that when you talk about it, you kind of compartmentalize it so that you keep it within that realm but um from the subject that we were talking about earlier when mary and i were talking about this and i said that was the only odd thing that kind of brought up in the conversation was why did they wear those sash bells or the cloth bells which I think you have your choice. You can you can wear either way. You know. Wear a strip of strip of leather around your waist, buckskin. <laughs> and wonder they had cottons. They made sashes. Mm -hmm. And then oh. if they could afford a belt or a belt, you had a belt. <laughs> that was just <laughs> as. <laughs> oh that's really interesting um i remember uh grandma dorothy shared one time that uh from around uh, talking about the sashes and why people you know people wear a sash instead of a leather belt mm -hmm. and uh she said that there was a time when they um you know they saw like when i guess drapes or curtains um, long time ago had uh, those sashes that you use to open them mm -hmm. or tie them or something. And she said that they, you know, sometimes they didn't have access to leather. And mm -hmm. so they just used, started using those sashes from, it was kind of like a fashion trend and it, that was what they used. And I guess they, uh, some of it stuck around, <laughs> but um, <laughs> I always think about that, you know, it's, it's, it still serves the, the purpose, oh, right? Pretty. Same function. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. Kind of reminds me of Scarlett O'Hara, <laughs> Gone with the Wind. <laughs> yes. That's what I was going to say. She made drapes. Why not? Oh. <laughs> yep. That's, it's that, that's true. You got to use, use what you have, you know? Yeah. Um, make do with what you've got right same and then the uh some, some lady was telling me, she mm -hmm. said people some women are gluing sequins to their to shoes or whatever to decorate them to for dance shoes or contest dancing i said glue and Sequence and glitter. Oh my gosh, how stupid. <laughs> you never know what they come up with. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's interesting how things uh how things change and you know different trends happen. I remember let's see, might have been around the early 2000s, late 90s, early 2000s. Do you remember when uh, people would use uh fabric? like that fat puffy fabric paint to do designs on shawls on dance shawls um, 
I kind of remember that. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you don't see that now. You don't see it anymore. And I was, I was just, I found an old shawl that, um, that my, one of my aunties had made um, when I was in college. And I was just thinking like nowadays, everyone has like beautiful applique, you know, all this ribbon work on their shawls. And it's just interesting, you know, how things change like that. <laughs> <laughs> definitely uh you know it's but it's good to it's good to remember and it's good to to know and to share you know how things were so we can you know just continue to carry that on so, uh -huh. uh -huh. all right not the glue, not the glue. <laughs> <laughs> not glue. <laughs> Maybe some of them don't work out, right? Some some trends don't stick around. <laughs> yeah. oh, that's funny. Um, okay. Well, I guess we better uh, wrap up because it's five o'clock. Um, uh, Grandma Martha, um, bay dots, I, if you can. Okay. <clears throat> Up our minds all day. Oh, they get on the um, keep I get, get on uh, anger. Um, go don't get get <clears throat> all day. Um, um, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that you do give us. Um, Thankful that we can gather here and uh, discuss our own language, the Kiowa language. Um, we can share information from the old days that um, uh, we can listen to, uh, we can translate, we can learn from those, and uh, hopefully be able to um, answer questions to the newcomers, the young people who are, we hope that will carry it on for us. Um, we're glad that we are still able to do all this. Um, also, we give thanks for uh, everything that we um, have received um, in the way of um, nourishment, in the way of um, um, the um, health of our bodies and the strength to be able to continue and, and study and still learn as well as sharing with other people. Uh, we thank you for all the people that could be here today to work gather on um, our going down again. Uh, it's so interesting that uh, you, it's almost like opening a book and um, moving page to page and learning things is what it is. And so we all appreciate that and I think we all enjoy it. And um, we again just say thank you for everything and uh, everyone that can be a part of that. Um, Omaha, I hope. Uh -ho. Uh -ho. All right. Awesome. Well, we'll see. Uh, hopefully we'll get to see uh, most of you on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to try to do an immersion session Wednesday. So we'll be uh, studying up and preparing for that. <laughs> um, but mm -hmm. um, good to see everyone. And uh, hopefully everyone has a good evening. So Hega ba oi bong ta, hega ba oi tong ta ta. Oh, I get so. Oh.